Here is Dr. Dave Franson. He's our NDSU Soils Extension Specialist. And he's going to go over a couple things. Couple yeah. things. So uh, a couple things we wanted me to, to visit about. One is uh, uh, the staging of the corn. The corn behind us, I think, is fairly typical from the area, from what Greg has, has told me uh, on the way out here. And it's uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 9, 10 leaves or so, uh, which is uh, probably a little bit behind what it normally is, but not too horribly behind, considering how late some of it was put in. So uh, at this stage, you can, you can take your fist and grab the middle and pull the leaves out. And this is what I got here. You can pull out the tassel. So the tassel is embedded in there right now at nine or ten leaves. And there happens to be about nine leaves uh, that will come out before the tassel gets serious. So so that's, uh, we're about, you know, can't really say you're halfway because the growth of corn is, is uh, sinusoidal. It's not a straight line. So. Anyway, we're more than halfway there to, to tassel, uh, and uh, the remaining will go fairly quickly. It's cool this morning, it may be cool tomorrow, but it's supposed to warm up and get some heat over the weekend and next week, and so things will really, you know, the corn farmers say, pop. So if you want to hear something really odd, come out some night when it's about 70 degrees or something like that at night and stand real still in the cornfield with a lot of bug spray on, and, and you can actually hear the corn growing. So that's kind of interesting. So the other reason I'm out here today, uh, too, is to remind you or introduce to you that we have new nitrogen recommendations for corn. Uh, that um, because of the late planting season, I uh, speed, sped things up a little bit. My programmer got the interactive web page going uh, in mid-April, and so we introduced that. And so it's on the web. You can go to my web page. It's Dave Franz at NDSU. I have a big web footprint, so it'll come up, and on the right-hand side, it'll say North, North Dakota Corn Nitrogen Calculator. Some of you are familiar with the wheat nitrogen calculator. It works somewhat the same. This is a little bit more complex because it has uh, more soils in there that we have to take, a, take into consideration. Uh, there are different recommendations, West River, East River. Uh, your tillage uh, comes into play. There's different recommendations for people that are long-term no-till, meaning six years continuous. No-till, not hobby no-till once in a while when it's convenient and then dig it up when you think it's going to get wet. These are, <laughs> these are you know, sincere uh, no-tillers. So they have a different recommendation than people that are conventional till or hobby no-tillers. So all of that, all of that is in there. What, what it means is that is that uh, we continue to stress that, that the soil test to two feet is really important to get good, a uh, better recommendation. That if you don't consider the soil test and just kind of guess, uh, it's you know kind of a guess. The other thing to consider too here is that you do have some soils with coarser textures. You know, you go to Gray City, you go to Carlsruhe, you have you know areas within counties, within townships that are fairly sandy that have leaching potential. Uh, those soils are least efficient soils in the state uh, regarding nitrogen, and so they scream. They scream for side dress. So, uh, in all but the the drought year, you know, 2012, it wouldn't have made much difference. But this year certainly would. Uh, any years that have been wet during May and June, uh, you would have had an advantage of going to a side dress. So. What that means around here is that just uh, setting up an ammonia applicator, if you're comfortable with ammonia, would do just fine. Or if you choose to do a cold or UAN, uh, that's completely up to you. We stress that a lot in the valley, and you'll read about it a lot in, in, in news releases and crop and pest report. Just because in the valley, the real high clay soils, they may look dry on top, but you get about three four inches down, and it's just this mucky play-doh and it doesn't seal at all and it balls up on your machines and so anhydrous is impossible to do with a side dress uh, except in the driest of years and so that's why we stress it there. But for people that aren't comfortable with, uh, with anhydrous and still want to get the nitrogen below the ground, the colder UAN is a, is a good choice. Other choices are like corn that's tall is too tall to go in with a ground applicator unless you're really set up with some of the super duper, you know, big shank, long shank type UAN applicators I've seen in the trade magazines, but yet I've seen up here. Uh, then uh, streaming uh, 28 between the rows, uh, between each row is a good plan. Uh, it's not as good as putting it in the ground, uh, particularly if it gets dry afterward, the efficiency is still down, but there is still some efficiency there. 
And then uh, the last choice, mainly because of the rate and because of logistics, I think, is, is putting urea over the top. Uh, in that case, you'd have to use agritain, MBPT, you know, it, that, that's the chemical. I'm not selling agritain, but anything with MBPT, which means agritain at this point because it's under patent, over the top with rates no more than 100 pounds of product, you know, 46 pounds of end. You don't want to go higher than that or you get some burn. Uh, Jasper uh, Tebow, uh, Dr. T will be talking a little bit later about sulfur. I don't want to get into that too much, but but that's something that you could put on with UAN or it's something you could put on over the top with mixed in with some urea, ammonium sulfate, or stream in between the rows of ammonium thiol or uh, ammonium sulfate solution. We had a lot of sulfur deficiencies this year. You can see a tint of it out here in this field this is right now. So with that, um, let me see. I'm doing really good on time, so are there any particular questions that anybody has about anything, anything you've seen, anything you're wondering about? Oh, one thing on the recommendations. Uh, a companion circular uh, is uh, out right now, uh, I think, uh, that within the next day or two it'll be up on my website, probably be up on the extension website very, very quickly. So everything has gone, gone through, so it goes through everything and has some pictures of deficiency symptoms but explains the background why we why we changed the recs the way we did uh, it's based on the economic production function that we use in the wheat so it's not based on giving you the maximum yield it's based on giving you the maximum profit and as we move from six dollar corn to three dollar corn uh, the rate of nitrogen changes. So you you know, the maximum amount of nitrogen you get for your maximum profit is not the same at three as it was at six. So, I mean, you can put on more and get another couple bushels, but frankly, it's a lot cheaper to lie at the coffee shop than to put on the extra end and lose money. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Your website was just off the uh, extension uh, website? Then? Just Google Day Friends and NDSU and it's under the soil science page. But if you do Google Dave Franz and NDSU, you'll come to, first thing will come up is Dr. Dave Franz and his home page. Click on that front page, right hand side, nitrogen calculator. Click on that, you're in. It, nothing to download, it's all on the web. So you just click, 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 and then you get an answer. You get a number at the bottom, and then people love this. The, pi the final number is not the final number. <laughs> the final number is up to you. So there's no way I can know everything about your farm, and so I, I give you some fuzz in the recommendation, plus or minus 30 pounds, kind of up to you, where you decide. Do you want to go a little bit more aggressive, you want to go, a little, you know, how do you want to do it? But side dressing is probably good, but you know, when you get those wet years, I say you didn't put it all down in the fall or in the spring, and then you just can't get in there decently to get it on in the spring when you like to, then then you can be up the creek, though, on that route. What's your thoughts on that? Well, uh, so far I haven't, um, I haven't personally been through a year where that, where side dressing has been impossible. And uh, since I've been here and since I've been preaching it in the valley, there hasn't been a year that people couldn't have got it on. So what I, what I want to stress people to do is to put on a base rate. Don't put everything on side dress because the corn needs to be babied from the very beginning. And I know it's hard to baby things in North Dakota, you know, for, for corn because you got all kinds of soil issues and weather and all that stuff. But baby as much as possible. Make sure that there's a base rate down. If you um, have um, uh, soils that uh, have a, a denitrification or a leaching potential using some kind of a nitrification inhibitor in the springtime probably would be helpful for the base rate. Uh, and then that'll carry you over until whenever you can get in here to side dress the corn. So yeah, I understand the angst. It's one more thing to angst about. But but let me give you another angst. What if you didn't? What if what if you put it all on pre-plant and it all leached away? What do you do then? So just a case in point. I've, I've, we worked on this for four years. We had over almost 80. Well, we put out 80 sites. We got 70, 70 yield a year, and some other things got the rest of them. But but we have a lot of sites across North Dakota, uh, and uh, in one of those sites anyway, uh, the actually a couple, the the people we were dealing with normally side dress their corn. They just been doing it for a long time. One was in a uh, sandier area with a high water table, and uh, and so this one year it was 2011, the really 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 wet year. So 
So we went in there to do our sensing uh, the very first time, and uh, the corn was five, six leaves, and, and I wrote a news article about it called Rainbow Corn, because you could see every color of the rainbow out in the guy's field. It was it was yellow, it was red, it was purple, and never, you know, I've never seen, you know, just some of those colors before, and it had all of them in there, and the neighbors, of course, had it too. So in a week or so, it had dried up a little bit, and so he went out, you know, around our plots and side dressed everything. Uh, neighbors, I don't know what, what they've been doing, but anyway. But his corn, you know, 160, 180 bushels, taller, you know, tall, green, and you drive down the road and his corn would look like this, and the neighbor's corn would, you know, be about as tall as the trailer, yellow, still a lot of colors, you know, the pre-plant end had gone away. And so I asked him, so what if you went ahead and pre-planted that? And, and just, uh, you know, fantasize that that nitrogen is going to be around. It's not, it's not correct. If you have soils that are available for loss, then you figure out a way to get the nitrogen on later. Because pre-plant, it's not going to work in wet years. It's just not going to. One last thing. In about a month, you're going to see another circular come out, and it's going to be on the use of active aquifer sensors in order to direct a side dress rate. So right now, what we're telling people is if you have those soils that are susceptible to loss, that you use the rate that's recommended by the website to do the pre-plant rate. And then uh, to, because you're side dressing, that bumps you into a higher productivity category. And so then you could use the subtraction to do that. But I think ultimately what'll, what needs to be done is that we need... We need another tool, and we have another tool, in order to predict what the nitrogen need difference is between a nitrogen enriched, non-limiting area in the field and the other areas of the field. And so we've developed, during these 60-some sites that we dealt with across the state, we've developed algorithms that relate the yield to the reading from either the green seeker sensor, red and red edge lenses, or the crop circle senses, red or red edge lenses. So there's a series of algorithms that we develop. And then those can be used internally through a decent programmer. So that it would, when you go out in the field, you put in a, you know, the, to do a pre-plant, you, you put on maybe 200 plus pounds in over in a corner someplace, someplace, you know, reasonably, what, similar to the greater part of the field within a variety. And then uh, when you come back in the side dress and the sensor goes over that first, Establishes the reference yield, and then as it goes through the field, uh, what it's going to do is going to take readings and then give a estimated yield of those areas outside of that non-limiting area. And that difference times the number of pounds of N in the bushel uh, uh, gives the amount of N that's deficient that's needed. Uh, divide it by an efficiency factor, usually around 0.6 or so, if you're doing something in the soil, and that gives you the rate of N. And so you can do a on the go application using the green seeker, using the crop circle, and these will be out in a month.